Hi everybody, good afternoon, Sarah Picaro uh, with Rewrite Your Life, Rapid Transformational Therapist, helping people heal from within who've been in toxic and unhealthy relationships. And today we're going to talk about five struggles uh, that people who have been um, or who've had parents that were narcissists, different struggles that they have in adulthood. So many people who were raised with narcissistic parents end up later in life in relationships with narcissists because one of the rules of the mind is that it will always take us towards what's familiar and avoid what's unfamiliar and if what's unfamiliar to you is really truly being loved feeling appreciated heard seen understood and uh, then you're going to avoid all that so we're going to talk about those five things if you were raised with narcissistic parents uh, how it might be affecting you in adulthood so the first thing is that children of narcissistic parents grow up without support or empathy. That's the number one thing that emotion or that narcissist lasts is emotional empathy. So from their primary caregivers, if you think about it, there are world when you're a baby, when you're growing up, your world is your parents and you look to them for all of your needs, whether it's a physical need or an emotional need. This is met in the beginning of your life by your parents. So your primary gear, care, primary caregivers. So this leads to a variety of debilitating struggles in adulthood if you don't have those primary needs met. So if your parents were a narcissist, more than likely going to end up with one yourself in adulthood. So how does this impact you? Well, the effects of the trauma alone can lead children uh, of toxic parents to just really having zero or low, low, low self-esteem, insecure attachment styles. A lot of clients I work with will discover their attachment style and go, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm anxious avoidant or whatever it is. They feel persistent anxiety. Um, there's self-harm, like a lot of these things, even suicidal ideation, where you get to that point where you just... I can't do this anymore and I no longer want to live. Um, but the most common thing is that people who have been in from narcissistic parents now experience in narcissistic relationships have these people pleasing tendencies because you were never good enough as a child. You had to always set out to prove that you were to get this external validation and do all these things so that your caregiver, when you were younger, you could please them. And obviously you needed to do that with um, showing them or doing different things. So this carries on into your adulthood where you have these people pleasing tendencies. Uh, it's very common to find that if, when you don't get that, you rage out and you you just become emotionally unpredictable uh, because that was the behavior of your parents. You could not do anything enough to appease or please them and they in turn were abusive, whether it was mentally, emotionally, physically, um, a lot going into this. So if you fail to appease or obey the narcissist, their parents, these crazy unjust commands, then you start to question yourself. Well, it's I'm not good enough. I didn't do it well enough. And you become subject to these rage and these outlashes. So it's no wonder that as an adult, you are, a, there's a term called fawning. Fawning is like people pleasing. It's the fourth trauma response. There's three. Um, fight, fight, please. Fight, flight, freeze, and then fawning. Fawning is that people-pleasing one. And you have been trained by this very real threat, this trauma response to people-please because it's like this psychological manipulative game that the caregivers or parents will play. So being on the receiving end of this obviously leads to these, these tendencies that you had in childhood don't just magically go away. So you may find that you actively try to avoid this, uh, this sense of feeling that, okay, I, I don't want them to yell at me or I don't want to get into an argument, so I'm just going to please them. I'm going to do what they tell me to do, when they want me to do it, how they want me to do it. If I please them, they won't abuse me. They won't yell at me. They won't attack me. And I just want to keep the peace. I want everyone to be happy. So then you just become a people pleaser. Um, the number two thing is that you may find that you suffer from this persistent self-doubt. Like your critical voice, this voice over here is never ever saying positive things. It's always saying very belittling and diminishing things because when you're a kid, your caregiver, uh, whatever they say to you becomes your inner voice. So if they're saying nasty, negative, hurtful, critical things to you, which if you were raised by a narcissist parent, they were constantly. Those are the beliefs that you begin to develop about yourself. Their inner voice becomes, their outer voice becomes your inner voice. You simply take this in because our mind lets everything in, whether it's good, bad, right, or wrong, healthy or unhealthy, it lets it in. And this 
it contributes to you as an adult suffering from persistent chronic self-doubt. Uh, you feel that, I mean, this chronic gaslighting, you know, narcissists will gaslight and for the parents, it's no different. Like they, they gaslight as well. And this leads to you just feeling like, I don't even know which way is up, feeling that your, your inner voice becomes theirs. And so um, it's, it's really, really horrendous when children are raised by narcissistic parents. Um, and obviously there's nothing you can do about it. Like you can't leave home when you're five and your your parents are yelling at you, manipulating you, and you're sitting there going, well, if I just do this, then they'll be happy. And then they're not because nothing you do is ever good enough with them. So it leads to that chronic sense of self-doubt. Uh, or it, then the next one is you feel guilt. You feel shame about succeeding. If you've ever found that like you did something really well, like maybe when you were a kid, you like got 100% on your spelling test or whatever it was, like you scored a goal in soccer. And it was like, well, uh, but you're team still lost oh my god are you kidding that's crushing then you feel guilt and shame and fear about succeeding many people I work with yes there's a fear of failure but there's a stronger fear of success because even when you succeed it simply wasn't good enough like it wasn't this grandiose well that's great but you still and then they'll begin to criticize belittle you so this shame and this fear and this guilt about like succeeding so as an adult being raised by narcissistic parents, you don't even care. You lose all sense of hope or motivation or direction. You don't even want to succeed. And you just feel like, what's the point? Like, even if I do really well, it still wasn't good enough. Um, even if I still scored that goal, my team still lost the game and it was my fault. So uh, it's, it's so damaging. As a child of a narcissistic parent, you feel this overwhelming sense of guilt when you do accomplish something, or you feel the need to hide it or pretend like, uh, I mean, yeah, I did okay. It wasn't that great though. So you bring yourself down because they're trained, you're trained at a young age to always expect the other shoe to drop when you even dare to shine brightly. It's like, ah, okay because you're punished pathologically by these really envious bullies that are your toxic parents and a similar effect is also seen among victims who've been you know in, in relationships with long term you'll see the similarities from your childhood into your adult relationship where you hide all of your successes because that voice in your head says yeah you did you did well but wasn't good enough and you're waiting for that shoe to drop uh, the next one is that you may feel that you have insecure or anxious attachment styles and obviously you end up in an abusive relationship as an adult. So children of narcissists, they carry this whole sense of worthlessness and toxic, toxic shame into which becomes your subconscious programming. And there are ways to rewire that. That's what I help people with. But these toxic attachment styles from your childhood become these same types of dynamics and relationships that you get into in your adulthood. So it's very likely that you fit into one of um, one or two of the styles where this insecure abuse that you endured from your parents is now showing up. Um, and there's different ones. So one of them is anxious preoccupied. So I'll describe anxious preoccupied. This is where an attachment style where you long for intimacy and closeness, but you're very insecure and overly preoccupied with these intimate relationships. So you search for someone to rescue you, to complete you. I've done a video on this before. It's called Cinderella Complex. If you're a woman, you're looking for that man on a white horse to just come sweep you away to save you, to complete you. The term, oh, they complete me. No, total BS. You need to complete yourself and then be, you know, join a relationship with someone who's whole and complete. So it's like two circles. I share like a good relationship is like a Venn diagram. You are whole and complete. Your partner's whole and complete. And then the part where it overlaps, that's a relationship. And it's simply an enhancement of who both of you are. But even without each other, you're whole and complete. Not half of a circle and you're half of a circle. And then, oh, you complete me. That contributed to this anxious preoccupied, preoccupied attachment style where you have an intense fear of abandonment and you become too dependent on your partner or the relationship. And this actually drives a good 
partner away. And it leads to this vicious cycle of self-fulfilling prophecies because once this fear of abandonment is confirmed, then that anxious preoccupied style unfortunately becomes more adamant and further increases your anxiety. Another one of these relationship patterns is called dismissive avoidant. So if you're dismissive avoidant, you'll notice that you are emotionally distant in relationships. You keep this wall up, like this guard up. You prioritize your independence and associate intimacy with the loss of independence. This used to be me. I used to go, oh, I'm so independent. I don't need anybody. Well, no, I don't need anybody other than myself. But because of this, like, oh, I don't need anybody and this prioritization of independence, you can't experience intimacy. So as a result, you exhibit emotionally unavailable behaviors. Well, guess who was emotionally unavailable in your earlier life? Your parents, a narcissist is emotionally unavailable. And now you've developed this where you're emotionally unavailable. So to avoid conflict in the relationship, you avoid talking about emotions or there's a fearful avoidant personality trait. And that's where people are ambivalent towards intimacy. They know that they must be with others to get their needs met. And they also associate relationships with pain. Ah, let that one sink in. Especially if you've been in a relationship with narcissists, you have experienced a lot of pain in your relationship. So maybe you've taken on this fearful avoidant personality trait and you can become so dependent on your partner that it, I mean, everything they do, you're like this puppet on a string where you just constantly feel rejected, but you also feel too, you feel so trapped when you get close to your partner. So it's this really interesting dynamic. If you've been raised by a narcissist, all of these things can show up. And then they lead to you obviously feeling defeated and worthless constantly. So the biggest thing I help people work through is you carry this toxic shame, like you carry it and, and almost you don't even know it but you feel the sense of helplessness and hopelessness and feel the sense of separateness from others. You get anxiety in social situations or this, this feeling of panic, a panic attack and anxiety attack. And this is that feeling of being different um, or an it's defective and reduce of this produce of trauma. So you feel and you carry this sense of burden, guilt and shame and this negative self-talk really doesn't belong to you. Who it belongs to is your caregiver that parent, that narcissistic parent that gave it to you. Uh, so this is called the inner critic or the inner voice. And you'll notice that it's constantly belittling you, but you've been conditioned to feel that your needs don't matter. So if you are a child of a narcissistic parent, remember you are worthy and deserving of good things. And you've got to go into your subconscious mind and uninstall that programming that this narcissistic parent installed that had you think, feel, and believe that you were not worthy. And now you have one of these personality traits and you just feel stuck and don't know what to do. So please reach out if that is you. I hope that maybe this shines some light on what you have experienced and that you're not crazy and you are enough, but maybe you just don't know where to go next. I would love to connect if this is you. So please do connect and reach out. Just click on banner and schedule a strategy call that we can help you heal. Even if you've been raised by a narcissistic parent, you're still going to be okay. I promise.